Now, for the solving linear equation section of the test, I'm going to start with the short answer. That was the fourth question on the assessment. And it says, for each question below, solve for x and show all work. So for a, I'm going to do 7x minus 3 is equal to 4x plus 3. Now, when I'm solving an equation, I have to get rid end up with only a variable on one side of the equation and a number on the other so that I can see how much that variable balances out. So I need to get rid of one of these x's. For no particular reason, I'm just going to get rid of the 4x. Well, actually, there is a reason, just because it's smaller, so I feel like it's easier to get rid of. I'm going to draw a line straight down the middle of my equal sign, just as a reminder that this is one side of my equation, this is the other side of my equation. To get rid of that 4x, I'm going to take away a 4x, which is going to cancel. I take 4x away from this side, so I've got to take 4x away from that side. 7x minus 4x is 3x. Bring down my 3, because remember, 3x and 3 are not like terms, so they cannot be put together. I'm going to bring down my 3. Now I need to work a little bit more to get this variable all isolated by itself, like what I want up here. So to get rid of this minus 3, I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. It is an equation, so if I add 3 over here, I have to add 3 over here. So this gives me 3x on one side, and this gives me 6 on the other side. I am going to give myself a little bit more space here. Okay, so remember this is multiplication. So I need to get rid of here. I subtracted 4x, the whole thing, because I wanted to get rid of all 4x's. Here, I only want to get rid of the 3, and I want to leave the x. So in that case, the opposite of multiplication, which is what I have going on right here, because this 3 is sitting next to the x, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So that's going to cancel out that 3, leave me with just an x. If I divide this side by 3, I have to divide this side by 3, so x is equal to 2. Problem number two in this section, I'm going to rewrite right down here on the grid. Oh, oops, it's on an x. I was getting ready to write. Okay, minus 2 minus x is equal to negative 3 times 2x plus 5. Okay, so I'm going to draw my little um, line right through the middle just as a reminder that this is the middle of my equation. I've got to use distributive property first. I can't do negative 2 minus x because they're not like terms. You can't add x's and numbers together. So, but this 6 sitting next to the parentheses means multiplication. I can multiply 6 by everything in the parentheses using the distributive property. So 6 times a negative 2 is a negative 12. 6 times a negative x is a minus 6x. Can't put the 12 and the 6x together. So now I'm going to go over here. Negative 3 times 2x is a negative 6x. Negative 3 times a positive 5 is a negative 15. Now, I might notice something kind of fishy already just by looking at it. Notice how I've got a negative 6x and a negative 6x. So negative 6x minus 12 on one side. Negative 6x minus 15 on the other side. There is no such thing as a number that will go into both sides of this equation so that negative 6x's minus 12 will be equal to negative 6x's take away 15. Let me just prove it to you by trying to put in, so I'll just put in a number. So negative 6 times 1 is a negative 6. Negative 12 minus 6 is a negative 18. So if I put the same number in over here, six, negative 6 times 1 is a negative 6. Negative 6 minus 15 is a negative 21. Okay, 18 and negative 21 is not the same. I could put numbers in this equation all day long. I'll never find a number. But if I put it in for x on both sides, put in the same number, negative 6x's minus 12 will never be the same thing as negative 6x's minus 15. So the answer to this one is no solution. That means there is no number on the planet that will work in this equation. Let's look at number 10, same section of the test. I'm going to kind of rewrite this over here a little bit. So 2x plus 7 minus x is equal to 2 plus x plus 5. I'll draw 
a line right through the middle. So I have some like terms I can combine this time. 2x's take away 1x is going to leave me with just 1x. I'm going to bring down my 7 because I can't add x plus 7. Now 2 and 5 can go together because they're like terms. So 7 plus x. Already I might notice there's something a little fishy going on here. x plus 7 is equal to 7 plus x. I can put in any number I want for x. Say I put in a 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. 7 plus 5 is 12. It's going to balance out. Let's say I put in a different number. I put in a 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. 7 plus 3 is also 10. I could sit here and keep putting numbers into this equation all day long. If I've got exactly the same thing on both sides of my equal sign, that means that any number on the planet, that number plus 7 is going to be the same thing as 7 plus that same number. So this equation the opposite of our last example, which had no solution, this one is the opposite. Instead, it has infinitely number solutions, infinitely many solutions. That means you can put any number on the planet into that equation, and it will work. Number 11. So Tia has a goldfish in her pond. She has a white goldfish that is 11 inches long. This is 3 inches more than twice the length of her goldfish. This relationship can be represented by the equation below. So 3 more than twice the length of her goldfish, which is 11. What is the length of the goldfish that we need to solve? So 2x plus 3 is equal to 11. I've just got a plain old two-step equation. So I'm going to get rid of this plus 3 with a minus 3 on both sides. It's going to cancel. 11 minus 3 is 8. So that's going to leave me with a 2x. I need to undo this multiplication by dividing, which will cancel out my 2's, and just leave me with an x. If I divide this side by 2, I've got to divide that side by 2. So x is equal to 4. The answer should have been c. Last but not least in this section, which of the following is equivalent to this expression, to this equation right here? So notice in our answer choices, they didn't actually solve any of those equations. Equivalent just means a fancy word for equal. So one of these basically means the same thing as this. So I'm going to look and see what I've got going on here. So I can't do k plus, first of all, I'm going to draw my line through the middle there. So I can't do k plus 11 because they're not like terms. And this 6k is just kind of hanging out right now because this k and this 11 are in parentheses and they should be added together, but because they're like not like terms, I can't. Therefore, I'm going to use good old-fashioned distributive property. Again, I've got this 8 on the outside of the parentheses, so I'm going to distribute it to what's inside the parentheses. 8 times k is an 8k. 8 plus 11 is a plus 11. I'm going to just bring down, oh, I didn't give myself enough room there. And 2 over, all right, so 8 times k is 8k. 8 times 11 is plus 88. I'm just going to bring down my 6k. And then the 19 is over on the other side of the equal sign all by itself. Now I can do 8k minus 6k, which is going to leave me with a 2k plus 88 equal to 19. So lo and behold, look right here, I've got 2k plus 88 is equal to 19. So this one is an equivalent form of my equation. If you picked A in the previous test, when you did your distributive property, you just forgot to do the 8 times 11 as well as the 8 times K. If you picked these 14s, okay, likely what you probably did is you added 8K plus 6K instead of subtracting them. So that's why you should have chosen B.